so uh, the the real deal or the real deal is the uh, pun on the front of the Irish Examiner sports section this morning. Hazard signs off in style as Chelsea outclass Arsenal. Tommy Martin says, tears set to flow an emotional Champions League final. That's his column. Uh, cool hand Luca. Connell committed to Ireland, says Mick McCarthy. Uh, Katie cashes in. Taylor never expected to become rich through boxing, but, well, she has, so fair play. And uh, Kerry defender fears young stars have been too good too soon. Paul Murphy says, Kerry, we're too good too early. The young lads were too good. Expectations are too high. Yarra, yarra, yarra. Um, what have you got for us? I have the mirror sport here, and we have Luca, but he's in, and um, so it's obviously about Luca Connell again, who's pulled out of our squad with a tire injury. So, should it be some question marks? And Declan wants to be brought up again when it comes yeah. to this. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, inevitable. Uh, a tire injury, not exactly one that you can kind of. It's not like his leg is hanging off no. and you can see it. No, and the thing is, if he's only going to play for a few minutes, it, it's whether or not he wanted to commit to Ireland or not. And that's that. It's disappointing if he didn't. And who knows what the, the young lad is thinking? He's only 18, 19 at the time, so it's, it's yeah. a difficult situation to be in. But. Again, if this was to happen, it just opens up a can of worms for Mick and the Irish squad because it's another player that might defect. But like I said, but that's further down the line. And then the other one, it's Blues murder. Um, just going on to how rampant Chelsea were last night. They were pretty, in the second half, they were so dominant and they totally deserved the win. Uh, so the Guardian on the front page, the Queen and the favourites, England's Owen Morgan face-to-face -face with the Queen at the launch of the Cricket World Cup. England are favourites to win the tournament. Lots of Owen Morgan talk in the newspapers today. We'll get to that in a minute. And the back page is Hazard's golden goodbye. Uh, Olivier Giroud, uh, just in case you couldn't see where Eden Hazard was there, he's pointing him out for you. Uh, in fairness, Olivier Giroud has had a fairly flaky career, but what a goal. Oh, what a header. Like, come on, that's like... The diving header across like the... I can do that all the time. I know, you try and... Most kids, when you're growing up, you try and get a diving header in the far corner when you're out on the pitch, but that was fantastic. The, the pace he got across there. Oh, goal. amazing. Brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. And again, it was great play from Chelsea, good cross. Um, I have here is the Irish Daily Mail, and the back is sealed with a kiss. Eden has it again, all about... Basically, him finishing off his career at Chelsea in style, will bring another championship to them, bring another medal, and... It looks like he's ready to go with his comments after the game. It definitely looks like it's straight after the game to say, I think it's time for a new challenge. So, And then again, Luca can't wait to commit to Ireland. I think the headline was probably <laughs> not too sure what I, how true that is, but you know, Mick McCarthy's coming out saying all the right things that he looks like he wants to play for Ireland, but obviously coming out with an injury is going to cast shadows and doubts over that. So, in case anybody missed this, McCarthy said that um, he played really well <clears throat> and actually really impressed him to the point where they were going to give him a run, mm. and they had a conversation. Um, McCarthy said, if I give you three minutes against Gibraltar, will you be pissed off later on down the line? Mm. And the kid goes, no, 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 I really want to play for you. Mm. And then he gets a thigh injury. So it just, it just because, you know, it's happened to us once, yeah. twice. I think we're, we're all going to be very sceptic about it because it's happened. But as a player, like if you're yourself, I'm sure if he has a thigh injury, I'm sure he's probably being scanned. There's probably a tear there. You know, I know that the medical staff there are, are very good. So I, I'm not sure if he's pulled out due to his own reasons, but I'm sure he's been checked and it's, it's been validated. And yeah. I don't think it's going to be as... Yeah, because if, 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 if he wasn't injured, I don't know if they would just say, look, now is not the right time and away you go. Because yeah. we would all read the code as, okay, fair enough, he wants to play for England. Yeah. And that's fine. If yeah. that's what he wants, yeah. that's fine. Just... Tell us now, don't tell yeah. us in three years I think time. as well, because everybody's been burnt in the last, last year with everything else, I think we're all on edge about someone else doing it. Yeah, totally. And, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, Hazard's golden goodbye. Was Hazard right or wrong to tell everybody that he was leaving immediately afterwards? Because I saw some, um, some people saying, ah, he's stealing the good of the night. He could have just... Yeah. I think it was a, it was a platform for him to say, but you could have waited. Like they have just won the Europa League and he's got another medal. You, you don't have to say it then, but I suppose it was it was the big stage and he's he, he's because he scored two goals and he set up one. It's an opportunity for the fans to be able to say, okay, listen, he's done everything he can for us. Yeah. So in that sense, and it would have been dishonest to like, yeah, oh, yeah, I haven't yeah, made my mind yeah. up yet. But actually, and like I said, no. if you're being asked a question, you kind of if you don't answer it, it looks like you're dodging it as well. Yeah. I wonder how much they're going to get from. They're, what, they're talking about 100 million, weren't they? Because, like, you know, you kind of feel like if he... Mm. He's worth more, right? Oh, he's worth more, In yeah. the yeah. hierarchy of how much everybody's worth at the minute. Like. Oh, he's, he's definitely up there. With, should be the most valued play, one of the most valued players in, in, in the world. But I suppose the contract situation and everything... Yeah, that's and the fact that he wants to go. He wants to go, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that was that one. And Connell will not affect England. And then just I want to talk, talk about this, because they've got a double-page spread on Owen Morgan, and they've got the house in Rush where he grew up. <laughs> and um, in fairness, it's not like it's not like he's posh cricket went to a 
public school in England because he was good, you know, at he the age talented. of 12. Exactly. He's just talented. It is a strange, like, uh, it's funny, every time I read about this and I see Owen Morgan, I'm, uh, obviously he's done it for the reasons of he, England, they're about cricket team, they're going to have more tournaments, he's going to get better opportunities in life. And, it. and would they, we didn't even have, to, we weren't a test nation when he moved. Yeah, but he, did, he ran a test nation, but we, 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 he did play for Ireland, didn't he? Yeah, 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 he played one day. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a strange, it's just, it's weird when you see some, Declan Rice was born and bred in England, so you're not, not comparatively speaking, but he was born in England, so he would have a sense of, own Morgan's Irish, like yeah. he's, he's fully, full-pledged Irishman, so to go and play for England in another sport is, is a strange one, but he's very successful and he's obviously captain for them, so, you know. Yeah. Um, he went, it was around this time he was offered a scholarship to Catholic University School, CUS, which is up there on Leeson Street, a private school just off Stevens Green. It wasn't something that had been done before, it said the head of sport at CUS, but it was clear that Owen was going to be something special. Since then, we've had several lads from Russia at the school on scholarships. So, like, cricket has been a way for him to change his life and yeah, become yeah. one of the best players in the world. Mm. He would not have been able to do that if he'd just stayed with Ireland. No, of course not. I don't really feel any of this, like, Ugh. No. Screw you, all, Morgan. I'm kind of like, go on. Yeah, go on. He, he's, he's bettering himself. And like I said, we're probably being a little bit... Uh, <laughs> the fact that we're, we're, we're so so detrimental when it comes to Declan Rice one, we're, we're probably not being as harsh on him. But I suppose that with, with it being cricket and being a sport that wouldn't be so widely played over here and in, being in such demand, then it, it, opportunities are going to be limited. So for him to go away and play it at, at a, England, which are one of the biggest cricket countries in the world, He's gonna, obviously just going to take the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wish him well and uh, best of luck to him. Um, I know there's lots of people out there who are going, how the hell could you do that? But, yeah. um, I have, again, um, the Sun Sport, Ed's the Real deal, um, just discussing how Hazard's going to be off to Real Madrid for the next season. Small one here is uh, you can go wrong, which is the discussion that Lukaku has been told he could possibly leave Manchester United. And then it's all about Luca again, a Luca at the future, which is the quotes about McCarthy saying he's committed and obviously the young lad pulling out with a tie injury. We'll come back to the Lukaku story a little bit later on in our uh, transfer rumour roundup and um, see what Stephen makes of that. Hazard's goodbye and that's the picture of the whole team. I like the trophy, the UEFA Cup, the no. Europa League trophy. It's not bad. No, I was close to it. Got a silver medal. Oh yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? Of course. Is that the worst thing? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's uh, listen. It's amazing to get there, and you're gonna. I remember the games getting there more fondly than I do the final because Actually, yeah. obviously you've got the, the big games where you beat Juventus and stuff like that. That will go down the biggest games in the history of Fulham. But you know, losing a final at that stage is you've gone that far, and we started that tournament back way back in the June time. So we played total cup style. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Like traveling all over, all over Europe, and most of some of Asia as well. <laughs> you think about it, but uh, yeah, it was it was devastating. But it's a great memory to have. Where was that game? It was in um, Hamburg. All oh, right. Okay. So uh, at least it wasn't kind of off the way no, to Baku. Uh, uh, listen, that's a, that's a, that's a whole topic to talk about how farcical it is that that game was over there. Cause yeah. Like regardless of the two teams being in it, it's a, it's a, it should be played in a central location in Europe that everybody can access, not somewhere that only five thousand fans from each team are going to go to. Exactly. And the the fact that it was on so late local time, yeah. the fact that um, locals were priced out of it ultimately, even though loads of free tickets ended up, the fact that Mkhitaryan couldn't even go there. It was it's, all nonsensical. It's a, oh, it's beyond belief that it was a major European final, the second biggest. That's the Champions League next week, and it should be highlighted. And when you see the start of the game, it was like there was n the atmosphere seemed dead. There was like yeah. you knew the camera panned around, and half the seats were empty. You're just going, this is this is not the way football should be seen. And considering how amazing some of the games building up to it has been, there would have been a big, you know, a big following for it. So for it to to have a final to be so. Disappointing in the sense of that side. It was, wasn't disappointing because there was loads of goals, but you know it just shouldn't happen. Did you stay on the pitch and watch the trophy celebration? Did you? Um, yeah, we did actually. We stayed for a little bit. I think we went off just that, just be, just before they kind of got the trophy. We kind of went off and. Did they make you parade up and get your losers medals as well? Yeah, we had to get our losers. All oh, right, okay. What's that like? Yeah, at the time you're devastated and you're gutted, but looking back at it now, it's still amazing for us, Fulham, to be. When you think about it, for a team like Fulham to be in the Europa League final is probably one of the biggest achievements any English team is in the sense of budget and squad yeah, and totally. everything. And we would have had a quite a small squad, so for us to be still competing in the Premiership and finishing the, in towards the top ten was so so amazing. And like I said, you see teams like Burnley t completely the Europa League ruined almost ruined their season, almost got them relegated. Yeah, and they would they would have had a they would have had a small enough squad, <coughs> a manager that played the same team didn't affect us as much and we were able to go on and get to the final so yeah, again amazing achievement great to be involved in it good not to have won it 
I'm just looking at the team there. I'd kind of I'd completely forgotten that Duffer was on that team. Yeah, Duffer, yeah. Um, Breda Hangeland, yeah. Mark Schwartz is in goals, Danny Murphy is the captain, Aaron Simon Davis. Yeah, Simon Davis scored. Zoltan yeah. Gira. Yeah. And Bobby Zamora. Bobby, Bobby Z. Bobby Z, yeah. Bobby yeah. Z, yeah. yeah no, we had, we, had, like, we, had a, we had a very good song. It was kind of. Some of the players were probably. Get, I was probably one of the youngest ones to be around the squad, but, but a lot of them were getting on a bit. But very experienced, played at big clubs, like someone had a lot of good medals, and we, we were just a good unit. And, then, and to top it all off, we had a very good manager, Roy Hodgson, who was at the time, well, even now, I feel as one of the best managers I've ever had. So he, he was exceptional. And Fulham was the right place for him as well, it seems. Oh, Matt, I think a club like Fulham or Crystal Palace that the expectation, expectation levels are not too high, yeah. Roy will exceed the expectations because he will get the, the club to a level higher than what they expect him to be. When he went to Liverpool, it was different because the expectations were here and Roy was just going to fall below them and that was what disappointed him. Yeah, and they were, they were a complete mess behind the scenes yeah, at that stage. Mess. Yeah, at that stage there was no unity, there was no, it was just haphazard the way things were going at the club. Now it's a completely different, it's a completely different club. Yeah, and who, who ultimately had responsibility for the signings that they made? Does he get any credit for it? Did he get all the blame for it? Like, Sergio Aguero was on the Atletico Madrid team in the PG. Yeah, and Diego Foran scored too. Simao, um, Jose Antonio Reyes still knocking yeah. about there as well. Not a bad team, David De Gea and goals. Yeah, very, very good side. Right? Like, Lesko have always been good side. And something about Lesko, they've always had amazing centre forwards. They've always, yeah. like, for, for how long as I can remember, they've always produced unbelievable, like Torres started there, Aguero not started his career there, but went there, Forlan, Diego Costa, they always seem, uh, at the moment, Griezmann, they always seem to have a forward that's that's coveted by the rest of Europe. Yeah, all the way back to the 80s. Yeah. I, I don't actually remember that much of the game, um, but it goes to extra time, mm. and Forlan knocks one in with about five minutes to go. Yeah, yeah four, five minutes to go, scored the winner. Um, we went, we scored first, um, Simon Davies got the, got for, um, scored first, and we looked like we were, we were doing well again, but they kind of got full hold and were a bit more dominant towards the end, and in the end, I think they deserved to win it, but it was, like I said, a great occasion. Yeah. Uh, European finals, obviously, uh, always great. So, um, that, so you beat Juve on the way to that tournament. Yeah, that was the game. Yeah, that was it. We were, so we got beat four. We got beat three one in Turin, and then we came back and beat them four one at the cottage. Um, we scored. Uh, it was an unbelievable, unbelievable result. It was yeah, the most amazing game I've ever experienced, and got Del Piero's jersey afterwards. So All right, very okay, happy, yeah. very nice. Uh, do you frame that? Do you have it? Yeah, I have to, I'll frame it. Yeah, I'll yeah. Go, yeah. How many jerseys have you got framed? I have a lot. Yeah, yeah, right. I have a lot. Yeah, I have a lot. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to say too many people going after. I have a lot. Yeah, um, just 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 great memories from from a career that you've you've delighted to have, and then you can share where like I said, our son Hugo and our daughter Harlow. They'd be nice to look back and see them and the medals and stuff. So they yeah. can look at what you've done. Who else have you got? Like so, what, if the, I was to ask you just for your top three instead of your top, top twenty. <laughs> I have Torres' last Liverpool game jersey. Right. Played against him, which is I think is a good one because at Liverpool he was amazing. Yeah, and you're a Liverpool fan. Yeah. No, you're a Spurs fan. I was Spurs. I, I was a Liverpool. Well, ah, you see, this see, is this it. Thing. See, I was a Liverpool fan as a kid, and yeah. then I went to Tottenham at sixteen. So it was. It's not like I lived in on the doorstep of Anfield and grew up supporting. Them. I grew up supporting. Them you're allowed to change. Yeah, so basically, you've got you. You're one of the few people in the world who are allowed to change at sixteen. Exactly. I went yeah. sixteen across to Tottenham, and then Tottenham became my club because that's where I kind of grew into football and became. But uh, yeah, uh, I have uh, Pirlo jersey signed by him. Right. So that's a good one. Um, yeah. God, I can go, I, I've got a lot of got gigs, skulls, quite a lot. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, must, we must get out to see them sometime. <laughs> uh, Hazard's flying farewell, so kind of as expected, Eden Hazard, the difference between the two teams. Chelsea 4, Arsenal 1. Um, club exclusive, Liverpool boss on final losses, Spurs test and right wing politics. So that's uh, Jonathan Liu um, of the London Independent, carry today in the Irish Independent, definitely worth the read. New recruit Connell assures McCarthy that he sees his future with Ireland. You could say he kissed the badge. <laughs> And, uh, and likes the catchy tune of the, the anthem. Uh, Katie must be patient in toughest fight of her career, says Dad Pete. And then uh, Larry Tompkins, despite the negativity towards the more far-reaching football rule changes trialled in pre-season and in this year's league, former Ireland winning captain and manager Larry Tompkins believes the GA needs to undertake an urgent review as soon as possible. A great chance to make the game more entertaining was lost. A few simple rule changes would make a huge difference. They're badly needed and that's obvious from what we've seen in the championship. Um, I have the Irish Daily Star and it's, again, top of it's Katie Taylor and it's her dad saying that it basically he thinks it would go the way and it'd be a points decision so it's going to be a tough night for her but she's more than capable of winning it. 
Um, there's a small column here that has Mane pool ready to take the crown, which is just Mane discussing how he feels that Liverpool are ready to be champions of Europe. And then the big story again is Eden off in style and just basically talking about how Hazard has scored two instead of one and is looks like he's ready to go to Real Madrid after sealing another medal for Chelsea. If you're a Liverpool fan, you want Real Madrid to buy Eden Hazard, so they're not interested in Sadio Mane or, or Firmino. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look like Salah has, like, it doesn't look like anybody wants no, which is to come and try and break the bank for Salah at the minute because it seems like he's happy there. He's happy there, yeah, he does seem happy there. And I think as well, with Liverpool, because of the football they're playing, because they're pushing for the Premier League, I think it's going to be harder to pull a player away from that club. And with a manager like Klopp, who looks like he's going to be there for the long haul, who has brought new ideas, who seems to be loved all around the place, why would you want to leave there? So, uh, you know, the club has got the history. They're looking like they're going to start writing history again soon, hopefully not too soon. But it's, um, I, I think it's going to be very hard for those players to want to go. Listen, Real Madrid and Barcelona, those teams are, are a huge pull for anybody. But Liverpool in the Champions League final this year, so... Yeah, exactly. I think, that, I think that's the key point. It's, um, they're, all going to, they're all going to make so much money anyway. Mm. That the, difference, the, the tiny bit yeah. of the difference at the top versus um, like happiness, mm. family happiness and career happiness. And like, if, if they could go on to... Like I said, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's a better lifestyle living in Madrid than it would be living in Liverpool. That's not, you know, that's not beat around the bush. But I think if you were to, um, but as a sense of like support and the fans, the Liverpool fans, are, they're amazing. And if you're playing at Liverpool, and if Liverpool could go on next year to win the league, it'd be so special because of how far Man City have pushed yeah. the bar that if Liverpool were to overtake them in any way and win it next year that would be an achievement beyond anything else that the, these other teams could have done really yeah uh, like does that appeal to footballers at some level more than the lifestyle in Madrid would appeal to them that's the depends on what type of football you are really yeah. like some, some people would rather just be able to go to Madrid and have every afternoon as a barbecue in your back garden because of sunshine and they said that sounds very appealing and it'd be nice but if you're at Liverpool and you're there and you're happy and you're comfortable and you're, you feel like you're going to do something special at a team with a manager that's special, not to quote Mourinho, but that that's kind of seems like what's happening there. You, yeah. You'd want to be part of that. Yeah, okay. Most people I think are going to the barbecue though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>